Okay, what other questions do we have? Love learning medical legal. It's, it actually is so much fun. It really is because it's always different. You're not working on a textbook about kidneys and run kidneys every day for six months. Every time the phone rings, you have no idea what it's gonna be. The phone rings and you're like, well, what's this gonna be about? You know, I just got a hemorrhoid case. I'm like, really? Okay, whatever. Or is this an explosion or is this, um, a ship case on a boat or some, it's always interesting. Hello, my name is Annie Goff and I have been specializing in medical legal illustration for 20 years. You are creating medical illustrations specifically to teach a a lay audience, typically a jury or a judge or an insurance adjuster that has no background in medicine, the attorney definitely cannot take this much paper in front of the jury. Um, they can't give this to the judge in a hearing or in a brief. It's our goal to summarize this. If you are not familiar with medical illustration, um, you might be surprised to know that medical illustration has been around since the fourth century BC. And you might also find it interesting that in the fourth century, there was what is now uh, considered the bar exam to evaluate potential attorneys. So we've all been around a long time. Why don't you just use a photograph? Um, why don't you just, you know, use a, re a reconstruction of the real person? Why wasn't it videotaped? Why didn't someone take a picture? And it's because it's often very confusing. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, it's inflammatory. The judge won't let it in if it's bleeding and disgusting. I'm often asked to illustrate or sketch the autopsy report or the autopsy photographs to soften them, to take away any information that is not necessary. And this illustration shows every single thing on your list. You can use this in depositions. You can use this at mediation. You can use this with your expert on the stand to talk about fatal injuries. X-rays to me are kind of like photographs. I have are, are they confusing? Are they clear? <laughs> they, they do tell us something, but do they tell the jury the story? And the attorney says to me, we don't need an illustration. This, this is everything. This is our evidence in black and white. They were negligent. They left it in. Well, you put it on a skeleton, so at least you have a size reference because you always want to be able to measure something or say how big something was. Um, but let's really think about this. Is this enough? So x-rays only show bones and metal. They show air, they show contrast material, but they don't show soft tissue. So let's talk about when you're in court and you're showing this, what's the rest of your story? The rest of the story is they had to remove this hemostat. And what was that like? And what is the pain and suffering? And where is the client now? So you illustrate what's really going on. The intestines are tangled inside this hemostat. And when they go in to remove it, they have to remove feet of intestine. And then they have to do a colostomy bag. And then they have to do this and this. And the, the treatment that this man goes through as a result of this goes on for months. And without the soft tissue, you don't have the emotion of the, of the intestines of your insides of how this really feels. You have to be an artist. A lot of people ask me, are you a graphic artist? As a medical illustration student, you've already done your undergrad. You've been accepted into a master's program, which is part of a medical school. So we take the first year of medical school with the medical students, which includes gross anatomy. And as we are learning gross anatomy, just like the medical students, we are also learning Photoshop. And also, as a, in the master's programs, you have to learn surgery. Um, you can't draw what an organ looks like if you haven't felt it. So there is a class called tissue dynamics. And this is where we are allowed to observe surgery whenever we want. Um, we just have to get on the list, go into the hospital, we scrub in, we stand in the corner and we can watch surgery. Um, but you really have to, to be able to draw suturing, you really need to know how to suture. When I graduated from medical illustration school, I was hired by a law firm. Um, working in the legal field is very unique for a medical illustrator. We can estimate that there are 2,000 medical illustrators and animators in the whole world. 
That's a really small group of people. And only 20% of that 2,000 does legal work. So there are only 400 of us servicing all of the attorneys in the world. I think lawyers should really consider hiring medical illustrators full-time just because you want to work on your visual storytelling, your message, your story, um, really from the very beginning, from even pre-litigation, when you sign up the client. You are creating illustrations for them to teach them about what happened to a client. Everyone is visual. We are all always looking at our phones, and telling stories with pictures. We all know is the key to successfully educating anyone about anything. There's no way for me to just stand here in front of the modern juror and the millennials with their phones and their Instagram. A lawyer can no longer stand in front of that kind of jury box and just talk. I mean, if you're talking about a dog, you better show a dog on the screen. This is a beautiful thing about PowerPoint. These are just two slides. I'm just gonna rotate back and forth. You don't always have to animate. You can just show your injury if you have your normal. I teach them how to teach the, the jury what is normal? What is the normal anatomy? You set the stage, then you show the crash. So I've created the illustration and I created a normal, right? So you can fracture the foot, right? This is awesome. But it's still a little confusing to a jury because you know there's a thousand little bones in the foot. So I colorize them. The rainbow works and you colorize the bones. And so now they know what fragment's going where. Um, oh, so this is a case that I wanted to show you guys. Um, this, is, because... this is something me and Phil are, are very familiar with on pedestrian crashes versus trucks. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, on your last behind. podcast, you talked about how sometimes an officer or a medical person will take something away or, or bring something to a scene. Oh. And it made me think of this case where um, I think I know where you're going with this. That's it, why? I got a feeling I know exactly how this is going to go. Yeah. So, obviously, he's taking photographs. He doesn't know what it is. And he, he goes up there and he puts his fingers in the grill and he starts messing with this thing and pulls it out and realizes it's a piece of bone. Ooh. Oh. So, he puts it on the ground and takes a picture of it. And the attorney decides that the picture of it, and they used a ruler, which is awesome. And this is excellent. But we decided that all of these pictures were not necessarily inflammatory, but kind of awkward for the jury. Yeah, I, and I was gonna say, I could see our judges up here having, having an issue with these with these Yeah, photos. so this, what happened was this didn't go in, but this went in. And so when we did the, these were two people on a motorcycle that were hit by the truck. And we just left this little piece of femur just sitting on the page. And when the attorney discussed all the injuries to the clients and then introduced this little bone fragment, he then introduced the police officer who had taken the pictures at the scene and just had him describe what he had done when he had walked up to the grill of the truck and and pulled on the this thing that he didn't know what it was and pulled it out and realized it was a piece of bone. So if timing is important, you want animation. If movement is important to liability or negligent, you, negligence, you want animation. And if something's just really complex and it makes sense to see it in 3D, you do that. It's sort of like the same reason why Isabel and I made an entire torso of a man to show the surgery because it was so complex which surgeon was standing where and which person was where and what was coming in and, and what the retractors look like and how far your hand could actually go into the incision to touch the man's anatomy. I mean, when, when it is complex, animation or 3D models are what you want. Okay, so they're going to do a surgery to remove the colloid cyst. And I've colored it yellow so we can always see it on the radiology. And to the jury, it doesn't matter if it's colloid cyst. It's a yellow jelly bean. It's a jelly bean and it's yellow and it's in the middle of her brain. And this is the goal of the surgery is to remove it. Well, what they did is they actually stabbed through the thalamus. They say they see the colloid cyst. In fact, they stabbed the right thalamus and they go all the way back almost into the left cerebellar peduncle. 
And of course, in this case, we showed all of the follow-up radiology colorized like this. But the point is for the jury, the yellow jelly bean is still there.